Hello everybody and welcome back. In this lecture we are going to focus on making these holes in our sphere itself so that we can have some finger and thumb holes. Now you may notice that it's turned on flat shaded again and that's because if we go to shade smooth we've got this horrible artifact and I can't really show you the holes that we've made. Now we can resolve that and we will do in the following lecture but for the moment let's focus on those holes. Hello everybody and welcome back. So we this is where we were before. We've got a little task to make these holes. Now, first of all, I'm going to change my view mode to wireframe. The reason for that is so I can see what's going on inside our model. If I go ahead and select these three faces, it's a problem with wireframe, sometimes you can select things behind, and we extrude, you will see that it's Going inwards, they're all going the same direction, which is great. We can see at the top, it actually says normal, but they're not going correctly. Now, the reason why I say correctly is because this bottom one here looks horrible. And that's because it's assessed all of these faces and picked a normal relative to all of them rather than individual faces. We can get around that very, very easily. I'm going to press undo to go back there and then I'm going to change this and be explicit. So at the top here we've got this option for global and once you've clicked on global you see that this is the transform orientation. So that applies to whether you're moving, scaling or rotating something which is what a transform basically is and we can do it locally, globally, normally Gimbal view and cursor. The gimbal view and cursor, I don't really use that often, but they, it is possible to use them for that. And there will be specific use cases. Global, well, and the best way I've thought about uh, the difference between local and global, imagine if you were stood up. Your local and global z-axis, the way you, that you think is up, is aligned. However, if you lay down on your bed, or on the sofa, or on the floor, now your local is going sideways, whereas the global has stayed up. The only way that you will get your local facing up again is if you were to apply that rotation. But we want normal. I'm going to be explicit in this case. And then we want all of these to move together. I could do them all individually and it would work now. But we want it to all be together. In order to do that, we're going to have to use individual origins under the pivot point menu. It's quite easy to forget about the pivot point. If you're not rotating something, you often don't think about pivoting. But scaling is one of those things as well as extruding. We're talking about using the individual origins. So we're looking at this face here, this face here, this face here. And now that we've set it up to normal and individual origins, we should get three blue lines, which we do, representing the normals of each of these faces. And with that, you can finish this off now with your challenge. Okay, so your challenge is to extrude the holes for the fingers and thumb. Make sure they're all equidistant so they go in the same depth. They should all be extruded along their normal, so none of them are going off wonky inside the ball. Now, if you have any overlap once you've extruded in, scale the faces at the bottom of the hole accordingly so it no longer overlaps. And I suggest you do that on all three for consistency. Finally, remember wireframe mode to see what's going on inside the model. Pause the video now and give that a go. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Let's go ahead now and create the holes for our fingers and thumbs. Okay, so now that we've got our bowling ball loaded up, let's go ahead and select these three faces. Brilliant. Let's go to our transform orientation and switch it to normal so we're explicit about it. I'm going to select individual origins and then I'm going to switch over to wireframe mode after I've had these selected, not before. Who would do that? Silly. Okay, about there, maybe a little bit more. So I can now move these, but I'm going to have to press the Z key again to move them. So there we go. And it's picked up because I've got normal selected here and individual origins. It's allowing me to move them as well along those individuals. Now, it's not quite half, so I could probably scale it by 0.5 and get away with it, but that's still not quite there. I don't want it to be too small at the bottom. Okay, looks good. I'm going to tab out into object mode, switch back to shaded mode, and oh, it hurts my eyes seeing that, you know. Um, but there are various ways of sorting that out. Are you starting to think, oh, I know, I I'm going to... I'm going to try this to make sure that that shading artifacting that's happening around the holes doesn't look horrible. 
And that could be a mini challenge for you. Before we actually get on to the various ways, because there is more than one way of sorting this out, uh, there are, how would you approach this at the moment with the knowledge that you've currently got? More geometry is definitely one way of approaching it. Whether or not it's the quote-unquote right way, that's entirely up to you. But we've, we're going to sort this out in the next lecture and look at the various options as well. So there we go, there's my bowling ball coming along great. Not quite sure of the colour, we're going to have to add a material to it soon. I'm looking forward to seeing your bowling balls as well, and I'll see you all in the next lecture.